All right, so now that I've tried out this Nike Vapor Street a little bit, I wanted to give you guys my overall thoughts on the shoe, some things I like and things I dislike, as well as give you guys a comparison to the Nike Epic React Flyknit and the Zoom Vaporfly 4%. What is going on guys, Hess here from collectivekicks.com. If you guys wanna shop this week's top sneaker deals, check the link in the description. First of all, thank you guys for stopping by and watching the video, it is much appreciated. And I am really excited to bring you guys this video because this is a pair of sneakers that I've been really excited to get my hands on and really just wanted to see what this Vapor Street was all about. Now, as I mentioned in the unboxing video, this is probably the most confusing shoe release that we've seen thus far this year. Part of the reason why is because it looks like the Zoom Vapor Fly Elite and that model was worn by three different athletes trying to break two in the marathon run and this is a street version of that shoe. The main fundamental difference about this shoe is that this uses Nike React, not the Zoom X that we have on the 4%. The retail on these were $180 versus the retail on these are $250. And if these actually released with uh, the Zoom X, I don't know what that price tag would be. I'm imagining like $300 or something crazy. But overall, it is really similar looking to the other shoe. And some people probably thought this had Zoom X in it for those sort of in the know. Uh, but the other part that is really confusing is if you didn't think this had Zoom X, you might think this had Lunar Lawn because that's what the other shoes in the same exact category have in them. So we have the Zoom Fly, and then we also have the Zoom Fly SP. And the difference between these two, just so you guys know, the midsoles and the soles are exactly the same, but the uppers are completely different. So this upper, as you can see, is a nod to the uh, 4%. So it's really pretty much the same. You can see the back collars, and you can see the tongue is pretty much exactly the same also. So, And then this is just the Zoom Fly. And again, both of these had Lunar Lawn on the midsoles. So we have Zoom X, Lunar Lawn, and now these ones have React. I already said it before and I'll say it again. Nike, what are you doing with your naming conventions and your confusion on all of these models? It's so darn confusing. It's hard to keep up with. And at least if you're gonna have so much confusing stuff out there, have good marketing so it makes it more clear to the consumers because it's just a lot of craziness uh, involved with all of this stuff. But with that being said, let's take a quick look at the shoe. You can see it has a huge, huge midsole I mean, this is like an inch and a half or whatever thick. I mean, it's just ridiculously large. And then you have a Flyknit upper, but this Flyknit is like treated. It feels almost like rubberized. It's really different. I don't know how to describe it, but it's really rough. And uh, it feels like it has extra rubber in it, but it's not stretchy. So that's kind of interesting. The tongue does have a stretchy part on it, however. So you can see this, the tongue section is very, very stretchy and very breathable. And then the collar area right here has some extra padding. You have a pull tab that has some reflection right there. And then you have this crazy, crazy back section right here. It looks like an arrow. But um, I mean, the overall shape of these shoes are wild. Like, look at that. It looks like an elf shoe, a lot of people were saying. Somebody said it looks like a Nerf football. I thought that was pretty hilarious. If you guys have any suggestions of what this looks like, leave a comment in the comment section as well. Uh, I'd love to read those. But, uh, but this little horn on the back is definitely more significant than on the other shoes. You could see the difference between this one and this one, I mean, it's significantly different. And then just so you guys can see between these two as well. Um, I mean, it's super exaggerated comparison. So that is kind of one of the things that I think will be interesting about the shoe. I do like that it curves up. So hopefully uh, you won't get a lot of wear and tear on this section back here. So as I mentioned, the cushioning system in here is Nike React. And then you can see it has a little bit of a plate here, here. And then this whole front section is a plate and you can see it's still squishy through this rubberized area. But then if you get down to the arc area here, you can see that's just, just straight uh, foam. So this is just raw react. There's no casing of Lunar Lawn or anything like that. It's just the raw react right here, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then you can see it comes all the way back through here. So because of that, it's really quite responsive. Because of that, it's quite cushiony, which is a pretty nice to touch. So one thing to note though, if you look at the bottom, you can see from the overall shape, that it's just crazy narrow through this section right here. So people like myself that have wider feet, this is just not the most ideal shoe for you because of how wide the footprint is on the bottom. And a comparison to the 4%, they're pretty narrow as well through this section right here. I find that my foot definitely kind of squishes out right here on 
both of the shoes. It's something I've grown to be accustomed to, I guess. Um, but here is a look at the uh, Zoom Flies and you can see the bottoms. And then so you guys can see a difference between the Epic Flyknit React and it definitely is a wider foot friendly on the Flyknit React, especially in this back section here versus this little itty bitty section right here. So this is probably the scariest part that this is so narrow right on the back part here, which is probably the main thing I don't really like about this shoe is how narrow it is on the back. It definitely reminds me of a very unstable shoe. Now I know I can go ahead and lace them up and make it a little bit more stable. All right, so I have some metrics that I wanna break down for you about this shoe. So first things first, the sizing of the shoe, I definitely say that this fits true to size. I know it is a little narrow in this section right here, obviously for wide feet, it's not very awesome, but in the front section, there is a lot of width. So you don't really need the extra length of the shoe to compensate. I would say that if I had to rate the cushioning out of a one to five, I would say the cushioning would probably be a four or five. It's really really soft and there's so much react here that it is definitely felt as soon as you try them on. However, on the flip side of that, I would say the responsiveness definitely lacks on the shoe. It is kind of like a two for me. One thing to note is that you can bend this shoe backwards and this shoe, you cannot do that because it has a carbon fiber plate and these have a plate also in here so you can't bend the back. It's not carbon fiber, but it's like a, um, a plastic plate or something else. And then this one also has a plate so you can't bend it back. So part of the reason why that is important is because like on the Zoom Vaporfly 4%, this line kind of represents, I believe, the carbon fiber plate inside. It adds a lot of responsiveness to the shoe because of it. And that's something that this shoe lacks because it doesn't have that carbon fiber plate. I really wish they would have put it in to make it the same as the other two. Nike React with that carbon fiber matched is like basically like the knockdown version of this with the Zoom X. So also the overall weight of this shoe is really, really impressive. It's super light, it's 7.7 .7 ounces, at least this exact pair that I have is. Breathability I would say is probably like a three out of five and just in general, the upper is really stiff. If you're looking for a soft upper, this is probably not it. The durability though I would say is definitely good, uh, maybe a three or four out of five. Because of that textured material on the flat and upper, it feels like it definitely would be more durable. And then also the fact that they added this huge plate on the front section of the shoe uh, and then the two little pads on the back. I would think that these are gonna be more durable than uh, some of the other models out there, especially the Epic React, as you can see, has tons of crazy wear from the first couple weeks. I'll get more into the comparison between those two in just a second. Overall traction on the shoe, I would say, is probably a three out of five. It's there, it's not very thick, and it's very, very um, soft, as you can see. Stability, I'd have to give this one a big fat one. Like, I think that this is probably the most unstable out of all four of those shoes up here. and. Unfortunately, when you have new cushiony technology, I think stability can definitely be an issue, but that paired with the fact that this is so narrow, it's definitely, I felt like I was gonna roll left or right on these ones, which wasn't the best feeling in the world. The last metric I wanted to mention is style, and for me personally, I would give these a four out of five. I know that's gonna be really, really high for a lot of people. Most people give these a one or a two, but for those people like me, like, you get it, right? Like you like something different, you like something that stands out, something that's a little bit exaggerated sometimes, and that's what these deliver. And I like it, I think it overall it looks really dope. It's kind of like a newer version of a Flyknit racer, but with a, just a way crazier sole. So overall, would I recommend this shoe? I think it is a cool looking shoe. It's definitely one that I plan on wearing here and there. I feel like I have to wear the laces really snug so I can improve the stability. But if you like mass amounts of cushioning, then these definitely are something worth trying, even though these are $180. Is it worth paying $30 extra dollars for that instead of the $150 for the Epic React Flyknits? Honestly, these things are really amazing, but the biggest pitfall of the Epic Reacts are the traction of the shoe. And that is something that you don't have to worry about with this shoe as much as the Epic React. But I do like that this is a little bit more wide foot friendly and has a little bit more of a stable feeling than these ones. Uh, however, if you want the maximum amount of React, you definitely feel it in this. I tried both of these on at the same time and you can feel it in this one way, way more than you can in this one. And that's really weird to say because when you try this one on for the first time, you're like, this Nike React stuff is no joke, but then, and then you try this one and you're like, wait a minute, can I even feel the React in this one comparison to this one? Nowadays with all of the technology advancements, it's crazy, man. There's just so much good stuff that you can end up buying. So you can't really go wrong either way. So I did mention the mass amounts of Nike React in the Vapor Streets, but how does that stack up to the reigning champ, the Nike Vaporfly 4%? Gotta be honest, this shoe is pretty amazing. Like. The more I have this shoe, the more I wear it. I'm like, this is pretty much untouchable. These things weigh 6.8 ounces and it's the lightest, most soft, like cushiony and most responsive shoe that I've ever tried on my foot. 
It's definitely lighter on your feet. It's definitely more cloud-like when you step even than the React in this one. And it's just because of the softer nature of the Zoom X. But then you have that pairing with the carbon fiber plate that just gives you that bounce that you don't get in the React in either pair of these React shoes, quite frankly, comparison to this shoe. So still number one, still $250 and still worth trying if you can get your hands on a pair. In my opinion, these things are just uh, unmatched. And the biggest pitfall on these definitely was the durability, unfortunately. So that is something all of these shoes out here probably have in common. They just have durability issues long-term uh, with these soles when you have these really soft foams. But overall, I like what Nike is bringing to the table because we have a lot of new cool technology. But hopefully this video was informative to anybody on the market for a pair of the Vapor Streets. And if it was informative, if you guys wanna hit the thumbs up button, feel free to do that. Also, if you guys wanna to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell when you wanna be notified if I post. Leave a comment, let me know, is this a shoe that you guys really wanna try or not? Before or after this video, what do you guys think? But anyways, if you guys want to check out the other videos on my screen at this time, feel free to click the screen. And thank you guys for stopping by and watching. We'll catch you guys for some more videos soon. Peace, guys.